Hi guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial coming to you from Rachel Productions. Uh, this video is in response to a request by one of my viewers who after seeing my other video on creating a spotlight or light cone for, for spotlight um, asked me to show them how to make a, a a projected light as as from a projector for instance which will give out a rectangular shape um, you know as with a movie projector so um, that's what this is all about and um, I've been busy struggling with my screencast uh, software which has been playing up so I've been doing this over and over again and I discovered something called blender brain which is uh, something that you get when you've been struggling with blender for many hours you go and have a cup of coffee and you go to the fridge and you find that you're busy putting the kettle back into the fridge instead of the milk so I'd advise anyone who's going to do any project on blender don't spend too many hours at a time alright let's hope my blenderized brain can uh, do this tutorial today for you um, Alright, uh, I'd advise you just to watch the other video on the light cone if you haven't, the link is here and um, that might just help because it's basically the same thing as far as the material goes for the fake cone of light um, but we just need to make a square uh, aperture in this case. Alright, let's imagine this is our um, projector, movie projector, uh, or just a light projector, and uh, we'll use nodes. I'm going to just give it a red, a red color so we can distinguish it. Okay, this is the screen um, which I have placed there on the other layer, layer 2, that is already white. Okay, um, alright, let's just concentrate on our projector here on layer 1 if I wanted to create an aperture, a rectangular aperture in the center here how will I go about it? Um, well, uh, most would probably think um, we could use um, the subdivision but each time you do it the, in, the subdivision is always in the center um, the intersection rather than the face Okay. So it doesn't actually work. We just need to do a loop cut. We just use Control R for that. I'm going to just move the mouse wheel once so that we have two cuts there. And in the vertical as well, um, we'll just give it two cuts there. And that way we can have a, um, a face in the center. So I'm going to uh, scale this, this rectangle in along the uh, Z axis. more or less there and then I'll scale on the x-axis scale a little bit more on the z-axis right okay so we have a um, rectangular shape okay for an aperture I'm going to select face mode I'm going to delete faces only the face only on there okay now um, the next thing that we will want to do is to um, add a light, the spotlight, as we did before. So I'm going to now do that. Let me just bring the cursor to the center there and I'm going to add the spotlight. I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis 90 degrees. I'm going to scale it all the way down. Scale it all the way down. I'm then going to gra grab it along the y-axis, keep it on the y-axis so it's in the center. Right, wonderful. Now, um, if we have a look over here, you can see that um, there is a rectangular, not very clear, but um, a rectangular shape of light. Um, Alright, the reason why it's not very clear is because we have the set setting here. Um, we need to bring that to zero. Okay, immediately we get a nice sharp outline to work with. Alright, 
um, we can of course increase the brightness and so on I'm going to do that in fact all right right now we'll add our cone of light um, we will add a another cube we will uh, scale this down scale it down along X and scale it a little bit we're matching it now to um, to this here this um, rectangle so scale along Z and scale along X alright so we've basically fitted that into there but uh, I don't want the face so I'm going to uh, delete that faces only and going to vertex mode I'm going to click on one of those and by pressing Control L we'll select all associated vertices I'm going to now um, grab this long Y and then I will grab that there okay and I'm going to bring the cursor to that section up there and scale it up slightly I'm just guessing now okay right let's go into uh, this view over here now you'll notice that um, there is no okay hold on we're getting a bit of light here at the back because the light is sticking out here so let's just grab that along Y okay uh, you'll notice that um, we're not getting any light or much on this in here because we haven't made this transparent as we did before we created glass material okay now we can see what's going on this is creating a prism effect because it's got index of refraction which we don't want um, you will not be able to bring this down to zero if you use the arrows the slider so just enter zero and there you go All right. Um, I've been very lucky here in that um, the um, the rectangle and the cone of light match um, but I don't like this it's a well it's sort of a 16 by 9 almost I suppose but um, let's say I wanted to adjust that okay so what I would need to do is scale it again right and then this um, we would also need to um, scale along Z more or less alright and if we look at uh, that um, it should be a little better okay scale Z alright okay so we can see that um, that that is working quite well one thing we need to do uh, we need to go into um, node editor alright guys um, I had to redo everything um, because I had a crash in between sorry about this um, okay it's more or less the same um, I've opened up the uh, node editor and um, there is our material we're going to add a shader uh, transparent 
and then we're going to combine that with an add shade and node there and we immediately get our light being emitted uh, one thing I did do when I redid this uh, just to note is I um, went and matched up as closely as I ca could uh, the aperture and the um, light coming through there so that we don't have any problems with light escaping and creating some sort of a, a, a border on the uh, edges there okay now you'll notice that we are getting a, a circular appearance there okay so let's try and fix that uh, if we adjust the angular size of this cone does that do anything? No. Uh, if we decrease this, yes. Okay. So just be careful. Uh, if you increase this to a large, uh, you will get that. I found 0 0.01 is probably the best. It gives you a nice fuzzy edge there. And once again, our light is a little bit larger. That's emanating. It's all very well because we are using a square aperture. But it's a projector it doesn't have a square aperture okay so how do we how do we sort this out if we are adding a uh, lens tube to the projector what will happen okay well let's see okay let's add the cylinder I'm just going to bring it down to about 20 uh, vertices I don't want it filled okay I'm going to uh, rotate this around the x-axis 90 I'm going to scale it down grab along the y-axis okay and here I'm making sure that the light is not touching the borders of this cylinder and the same here um, in fact I can scale this down let me scale it to its individual origin Alright, but you'll notice here that it's it's um, a little bit narrower. So on the top here, we'll scale it. Mm. Ugh, yeah, that should be fine. All right. So does this work? Uh, let's have a look. Okay, the first thing to do um, is to smooth this as well, sorry. Okay, it's the first thing to do is to see if it's intersecting there. If it is, then you can just scale it up. Right, on the top, nothing. Okay, so that's great. Alright, um, let's have a look. If it's not intersecting, it shouldn't create a round circle. Alright, so that's working pretty good. You might find that it creates a slightly more rounded edge, uh, especially if you move, um, especially if you move it, bring it out there. Right? Some old movie projectors do have that rounded edge, um, which is fine. Um, but generally, that should be a grab long way. So generally, that should be okay. Let's make sure it's still. Yeah. All right. And uh, how does this look uh, in the rendered version? Not too bad. Not too shabby. All right, guys. Uh, that's pretty much it. There's one more thing I want to do um, uh, besides what I've told you already, and uh, it's something else that one can do with uh, with this projector. It is a light projector. It's using the uh, kind of using the effect of a pinhole uh, camera, but not truly. It doesn't follow the principles of light because with a pinhole camera, if you were to have an object in here, it would be projected, inverted, and uh, and laterally uh, um, reversed. So. Um, this this just fake this is just faking a light a light uh, pinhole camera or projector. Um, uh, I'll demonstrate to you something that can be done here as well. Oops. Um, drift. 
let's just add text rotate around it rotate around x90 scale right uh, let's go and have a look yeah okay so the text is being um, the text is being projected um, you'll notice it is a bit fuzzy again that can be uh, corrected on the spotlight settings with the setting over here okay about 0 0.03 perhaps hmm, not too bad alright so you'll notice it's not inverted laterally uh, and horizontally um, we can also to this text um, we can add a material transparent and give it a yellow and so on okay and then uh, one other thing uh, we can use the uh, uh, world settings we can bring this a bit down because it is in a cinema what have you okay another setting that you can work with is this over here like we did in the other tutorial where you could add a little bit of a yellowish tinge to this light and the spotlight of course itself as well um, you know and so on